now have some breaking news, and this is very significant. For those looking at what's the next huge step, you're wondering about Jack Smith. Well, Jack Smith, with a big development, the special counsel is in active talks with the Justice Department about how to end his federal prosecutions of President Trump. Now, this is according to a justice official familiar with the discussions. Discussions expected to last several days. But the person breaking this news, of course, is our excellent chief legal affairs correspondent, Paula Reed. Also with me, our senior legal analyst, Ellie Honig. But Paula, uh, look, this has been the huge question hanging all of this over the yeah. whole election and now in the aftermath. What are you learning? So we knew there were a few options. Uh, if former president, who now is, of course, the president-elect, returned to the White House, there were a few ways that his federal cases could be resolved. One is he said that he would try to fire Jack Smith. Unclear if he could do that because Smith is not a presidential appointee, but it was expected that his Justice Department would drop these cases. It was clear once he was reelected, he was never going to face trial. But we knew there was another option, and that is that potentially the Biden Justice Department could try to resolve or wind down these cases before Trump takes office. And a lot of this stems from a an office of legal counsel that is a department within the Justice Department that gives advice to lawyers who work there. Um, this memo that talks about prosecutions uh, of a sitting president, and they are looking very closely at that memo to try to determine how does that apply in this case, where you have two pending cases against a president-elect. Can they continue to move forward? Can they take additional steps? Right now, I'm told they are in discussions. Jack Smith talking with top leaders at the Justice Department about exactly what this looks like. I'm told that Jack Smith is someone who understands that he has to follow uh, whatever the rules and regulations of the Justice Department are. So at this point, they are looking for ways to wind this down. I'm told it's unclear when this will happen and what it will look like. I mean, Paula, can I just ask you in terms of your reporting, given how the polls showed this would go, given that the Trump campaign didn't think this would go this way, given that the Harris campaign didn't <laughs> think this would go this way, I mean, did Jack Smith have this all sort of as a possibility really prepared? Or is he also, just as human being Jack Smith, <laughs> reacting to this in the moment and trying to figure it out? So in speaking with my sources, they were not aware of any discussions that had happened prior to today and said this is really the first time there have been formal discussions. But everyone who's oh. been looking at the polls knew that this was a, a possibility, right? I mean, Trump has been asked what would he do uh, regarding Jack Smith if he was reelected. But I'm told that the formal discussions, according to my source, have begun in earnest today. And it's going to take them several days to figure out exactly what this looks like and what they'll do. I'm also told not to expect likely any court hearings. These would likely be filings, if anything, that would try to resolve these cases. Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's your man Wise. And today we got to talk about it, man. Democrats lawfare strategy against Trump is unraveling and it's quite the spectacle. Special counsel Jack Smith facing multiple failed cases against Trump may soon be out of the picture. With Trump's return to the Oval Office, the DOJ's policy barring prosecution of sitting presidents means cases like the J6 and documents case will likely go away. And let's not forget Letitia James, who's still clinging to a shaky case against Trump. If these cases were solid, why about down now? It's clear they were more about blocking Trump then about, you know, obtaining justice at this point. Here we are. We've studied their platforms. We've identified certain possibilities, fact patterns. We've created contingency plans. So no matter what the next administration throws at us, we're ready. We're ready to respond to their attacks. We're ready to respond to any attempts to cut or eliminate any funding to the great state of New York, as the governor outlined. So, just to, so despite what has happened on the national stage, we will continue to stand tall in the face of injustice, revenge, or retribution. We will continue to protect and our most vulnerable and marginalized amongst us because it is my sworn duty and responsibility to lead that fight, working with the governor of this great state, Kathy Hochul. This is not the time to be fearful, New York, but faithful and steadfast, knowing that I, as the Attorney General, along with my entire team, we are guardians of the law, and we are prepared, my friends, 
to fight back. Thank you. Letitia James has a contingency plan. This is pathetic, man. They just can't take the L. Declaring herself a guardian of the law after years of targeting Trump is quite rich. Her response to his win shows exactly what's wrong with the establishment. Partisan actors more focused on resisting elected leadership than serving constituents. James talks about fighting back as if it's the end of the world instead of accepting the choice of the American people, of the voters. Americans want economic opportunity, safe streets, and an end to political agendas, but instead, these figures seem set on escalating divisions. What else can we expect from someone whose campaign was built on going after Trump? The United States has complained that I'm engaging in some sort of political witch hunt, that I've got some personal vendetta against him, that I campaigned against him. That is not true. This illegitimate president who sits in the White House. That president, because he's not my president, he's an illegitimate president. His days are numbered. His days are numbered. We've got to get ready to mobilize. And we've got to get ready to agitate and irritate until victory is won, but more importantly, until Trump is defeated. We will all rise up and resist this man. And ultimately, we'll bring him down. This illegitimate president, I'm going to give you the same level of respect that you gave to President Obama, and that is absolutely no respect at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's not just her saying it. CNN of all outlets confirmed it too a while back. Paid back. But it is a fact that Letitia James, as Paula Reed said, Letitia James campaigned for attorney general in 2018 specifically on a promise of vote for me and I'll get Donald Trump. That's not something she said once. She said it dozens of times. She said it in writing. She fundraised off it. And she wasn't even specific. She didn't say, I'll get him for inflating his assets. At one point, she said he could be indicted for money laundering. At one point, she said, the day after she was elected, she said, and I quote, we're definitely going to sue his ass. He'll know my name. And when you make statements like that, how can you say there's no political angle to this? You can maybe say the facts are there, but it's also political. That's Letitia James's own doing. So what if... Yeah. You can't say there's no political angle. You just can't. You can't do that. You can't say there was no agenda there by Letitia James. James went after Trump's businesses, alleging fraud over alleged inflated property values. And no one better than I before James brought on this case. The banks were paid. They were happy. The only person who couldn't let it go, who had to create something out of literally nothing was Letitia James. Now she's doubling down, likely because she can't let go of this political vendetta, especially now that Trump is president-elect, adding to the irony, we've got New York City or New York State Governor Kathy Hochul, who's trying to play both sides. On one hand, she's promising to oppose Trump on everything, while on the other side, she's practically begging Trump to support all these things she claims she wants to do in New York. Check this out. Needs to repeal his elimination of the state and local tax deduction. He also needs to support our ongoing efforts to support our transit, support the Gateway Tunnel, the Second Avenue subway, and fund major critical infrastructure, again, particularly the MTA. And also to back our critical economic development projects, such as those funded by the Chips and Science Act, which is intended to bring manufacturing back home from China and South Asia and create thousands of jobs in our state as is occurring with Micron. And I will work with him or anybody, regardless of party, on these kind of efforts that I know will benefit the state of New York. However, if you try to harm New Yorkers or roll back their rights, I will fight you every step of the way. New Yorkers are resilient. We fought the first time around and we'll fight again. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, these people, man, there's something else. Leticia James now wants Trump to reinstate the SALT deduction, raising taxes on wealthy residents in blue states. So while she fights him at every turn, ooh, that wasn't Leticia James. Kathy Hochul now wants Trump to reinstate the SALT deduction, which he previously cut 
raising taxes on wealthy residents in blue states. So while she fights him at every turn, she's asking him to lower taxes for rich liberals. Hypocrisy at its finest. Need more proof that these cases were political? Look at the Manhattan hush money case. Judge Juan Mershon might toss the conviction entirely, which would be a major blow to the Democrats' lawfare strategy. If these cases were real, why are they all of a sudden being dropped? The timing reveals this was about politics, not justice. This entire ordeal has exposed how the justice system has been weaponized. Trump's victory isn't just a return to office. It's a statement against corruption. Now, I want to hear from you guys. Do you think that they're panicking? Were these cases political from the jump? Drop your comments in the comment section below. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Turn those notifications on so you never miss an upload. Consider joining the ARP family. Shout out to Stephen Brodsky, Tracy Coates, and Nancy C for joining the ARP family. I appreciate you guys. God bless you. Keep God first in your life. Stay prayed up and we'll catch up with you all next time. Peace.